Operating characteristics or OC curves can tell you a lot about whether or not you're going to accept or reject your lot given certain characteristics of your sample. The question is, how do you put them together? Well, you can either do it in Excel or you can use the Poisson distribution tables and do a bunch of calculations to figure out what does your OC curve look like. And that's what we'll talk about here. So in this video, we're going to look at the steps for constructing a single acceptance OC curve, and we're going to actually do the calculations for a single point using the Poisson tables. Notice that I said we can do Excel to do this at the beginning of the video, and we can. And I do have a video on that. The link to that video is listed in the video description below. So if you don't want to bother with the Poisson tables, if you want to use Excel, then please check out that video to see how you calculate these curves in Excel. For now, we're going to look at how you do it with the Poisson tables and hand calculations. So here's a sample OC curve. In this curve, we have a sample size of 30 and acceptance criteria of 3. So here, n is 30, c is 3, and this is the general curve shape for that particular plan. But how did we get that curve shape? How do we know, for example, that if we have a percent nonconforming in our population, about 5%, we have a probability of acceptance of somewhere around 0.92? How do we figure that out? Well, one way to do it is to take our lot and take a whole bunch of samples out of our lot and see, okay, if we average the probability of yes accept versus no reject, then if we take lots and lots and lots of samples, we'll get that probability of acceptance correct. I don't know about you, but I don't have the time to do that. I don't have the money to throw out that much product because a lot of those tests are destructive. So let's look at the Poisson tables to figure out our probability of acceptance. Notice that this is for calculating a single point. To actually construct the full OC curve, we're going to need to do this multiple times. But for each point, we use the same procedure. First, we choose a P0 value, or the fraction nonconforming in our population. Notice that this is fraction nonconforming, not percent nonconforming. So if I choose that I have a 1% nonconforming in my population, then I need to convert that to 0 0.01 for my calculations. This will not work properly if you use percents instead of fractions. Second thing I need to do is calculate my NP0 value, which is just my sample size N times whatever P0 value I chose in step one. Now that I have my NP0 value, I can look up my probability of acceptance, PA, from my NP0 and C from the Poisson tables, and then I have PA. I go back to P0 and I can use that PA and P0 pair to plot my point on my OC curve. And then I need to repeat that until I have my full OC curve shape. And that's at least seven points more if you want to be more confident about what that shape looks like. So let's do an example point. Remember from our plan, we have a sample size of 30, acceptance criteria of 3. I'm going to select a P0 value of 1% or 0 0.01. So if I multiply my sample size, which is 30, times my fraction nonconforming in my population, or 0 0.01, I get an NP0 value of 0.3. All right, now I can pull up my Poisson tables to look like this. So here, I have my NP0 values going across the rows. So this is what they are. So I know my NP0 value that I want is 0.3. So I'm going to be looking at this chunk of data. Now I need to choose my correct C value. So in my plan, my C value is 3. I'm going to read across the 3 row. And now I get to this two data points here. Which one do I choose? Well, this first one is the probability of acceptance of exactly three. So that particular value, exactly three. I don't want that. I want three or fewer because it's okay if I accept a lot if I have zero or one or two or three nonconforming units there. And to do that, I need the cumulative probability, which is in parentheses. So this value. 
All right, so that is my probability of acceptance, one. That is quite high, but I'm pretty tolerant in the number of defects that I can get. So I would expect that if I have 1% non-conforming in my population and I take a sample size of 30, I let myself have three defects, I'm not really likely to get a sample that's gonna have four or more defects, so I'm almost certain to be able to accept that. All right, I have my PA and P0 pair. I can plot those on my OC curve and I get that point right at that star there. So that was one single point. If I want to construct this entire curve, I'm gonna need more stars. And so I'm going to choose different percent non-conforming in population. Maybe I'll try 5% and 10% and 15% and 20% and see how does that go? Do I have a full curve from that or do I only have a partial curve? If you have a partial curve that doesn't really drop down below about 10% probability of acceptance, you wanna keep going until you get there. Yes, this does require multiple calculations. And yes, sometimes you can be a little bit too conservative in how fast you think your OC curve is going to drop and you have a lot of points clustered up here. In that case, it's a good idea to set up your calculations in Excel so that if you notice that your points are clustered much too closely together up here, then you can quickly change your percent non-conforming and recalculate your probability of acceptance for your higher percent non-conforming and then generate your full OC curve. Once you've generated your full OC curve, then you can see what is your probability of acceptance given a certain percent non-conforming in your population. And then you can go back to previous data of your particular population that you're working on, maybe soup cans, maybe ground beef, maybe candy bars, ice cream, whatever product you have, and say, what typically is my percent non-conforming in a population given a certain defect? And then look at your OC curve to say, how likely am I to accept that lot? Do I have a low percent non-conforming and so I'm likely to accept a lot? Or if it's a little higher, then how likely am I to reject a lot? So once you've got your OC curve together, that helps you make decisions about not only what's the likelihood of accepting rejecting, it also helps you understand, do you want that particular probability of accepting the lot? So if you're dealing with ground beef, for example, and you have about 100% chance of accepting your lot, and you have 3% non-conforming, and let's say that 3% is related to microbial, that may not be the best sampling plan for you. So you can use your OC curves and the probability of acceptance to adjust your sampling plan until you feel that you are taking on the appropriate risk for your particular defects.